Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord just to be with us. Father, we love you, Lord, and we thank you so much. God, for your mercy, your grace, and God, all that you do for us. And God, we thank you for another time, another opportunity, Lord, just to enter into your presence. God, help us to lay everything aside. And God, focus on you tonight. God, because we understand it's not about us tonight. It's all about you. And God, I pray for your freedom. And God, your liberty in this service. Touch our hearts, touch our lives, and draw us closer to you. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight as Brother Terry comes to lead us to worship. <laughs> This first song we're going to sing is Jesus in my hand. Oh, 
sorrow bear no more burden to bear no more sickness no pain no more dying over there and forever I will be with the one who died for me what a day Because God can take care of anything. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, you know the hands, God. You know the burdens. You know the troubles. You know, you know the heartache of each and every one, God. There's nothing you do not know. And God, right now, we come together asking that you touch each and every one of these needs. That God, that we can come back and talk about how miracles you have done. How you've done a mighty work in our lives, God. And we can testify on how each and every day that you have taken care of us. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, because we're believing this is going to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Holy Spirit, come in this place. Fill our hearts with your abundant grace. Let our tongues want to come, we're going to take up the offering. Praise God. Cody, you want to pray with the offering first? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for uh, just allowing us to come into your presence tonight, Lord God. We pray with this offering, Lord. We have to bless it and multiply it. Put it in the place that it needs to go, Lord. Thank you for listening to the precious name. Oh, there is going to be a beating.
Pastor Stacy's going to come and give us this special.
He's glad tonight he's not in the tomb. He's not on the cross. Amen. But he's alive forevermore. Amen. Can we give him another hand clap of praise tonight? Because we serve a victorious, risen Savior. Hallelujah. People wear those crosses with Jesus on the cross. How many glad he's not on the cross? Amen, but he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us tonight. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like you to turn to Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to read verse number 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 6. You found that, say amen. amen. If you don't have your Bibles, it's here on the screen. It says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he might sometimes, maybe, shall direct thy paths. Amen. Tonight I want to preach on the thought of recognizing and acknowledging God. Recognizing and acknowledging God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight, God, for your spirit, God, that's here amongst us. We thank you tonight because, Lord, you're alive forevermore. And we know tonight you are sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us tonight. And Father, I need your help tonight. I need the unction of the Holy Ghost to help me to preach your word tonight. These are not my words. These are your words. And I pray, God, that you would anoint me God, that you would help me to say, God, what, what you want said here tonight. Father, I pray it all tonight in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. The word recognize means to show appreciation of or to acknowledge. I believe tonight that God wants us to recognize and to acknowledge Him every day in every area of our lives. Too many people recognize God when they have problems, we're in the midst of a trial, when they're in the midst of tribulation, but when things are going good, they forget who God is. But I believe tonight that we need to acknowledge God, we need to recognize God, and we need to show our appreciation to God every single day of our lives whether things are going good or whether things are going bad. Amen? We need to recognize God and acknowledge Him. 
How many can remember back in the Old Testament that all the times in Israel they failed to recognize God as their God? They would get their eyes on other gods. They would begin to worship false idols. And then they would be eventually led back into bondage because they failed to acknowledge God as their God or their Lord. And how many people can we think about tonight that have failed to acknowledge God and they no longer serve Him anymore? They got their eyes on other things. They began to acknowledge other things as their God. They allowed other things to become more important to, uh, than God. And today they've been led back into bondage of sin. And they're no longer serving the Lord. I don't know about you, but He's done too much for me, for me to forget about Him. Amen. But I want to wake up in the morning acknowledging Him. I want to lay my head down at night. Amen. Acknowledge in Him. I don't want to go through any part of my day and forget to think that God is with me and I need to give Him praise and glory and I need to acknowledge Him throughout the day, every day. Amen? Amen. We must learn to acknowledge God in everything and allow Him to direct our path. I've said it a million times, God will not force Himself upon anyone. We must acknowledge Him and allow Him to to direct our past. He can and will, amen, make men serve Him. He can make you serve Him if He wanted to. He can make you walk down the path that He has set before you. But He won't. He won't. He'll let you wander down the wrong path if you want to. He'll let you wander down a path that will get you in all kinds of trouble if you fail to acknowledge Him if you fail to call out to Him and ask for His help and His direction, He'll let you walk down whatever path you want to walk down. I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk down any path unless the Lord is guiding my steps, unless the Lord is walking right beside me. Amen. I want to acknowledge Him in all my ways tonight. And I want to allow Him to direct my path. Psalms 32 and verse 5. It says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. <coughs> Sorry. The most important thing that we must do is we must all recognize and acknowledge that we are sinners and that we need Him to be our Savior. Amen. We know tonight, the Bible says, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we must recognize and we must acknowledge that if we sin, and that we are sinners, and He's the only one that can forgive our sins. Amen. It's not how good we can get. It's not how much that we can try to push our sin aside and then eventually it will go away from us. Amen. We must acknowledge God and we must confess our sins to Him. And He's the only one that can forgive our sins tonight. But we must first acknowledge that we have sinned. Amen. Too many people today want to try to hide it. They want to try to justify it. Amen. But why not just confess it to God? Amen. Because He already knows about it. And let Him forgive you of it. And just continue on the way. You'll save yourself a whole lot of heartache. But we want to hide it. Cover it up. Justify it. My sin's not as bad as her sin. My sin is not as bad as your sin. My, how many knows tonight God's not pleased with any sin? And if there's sin in our lives, we need to acknowledge it. We need to confess it. We need to ask God to forgive us of it. And we need to learn from it. And we need to move away from it. And walk down a different path. Because how many knows God don't want us walking down a sinful path? He wants us to walk down the path that He has set before us. Amen. And I don't believe the path that God sets for us leads us into, amen, sinful things. God has a path for us that leads us away from sinful things. But when we do sin, we must acknowledge it, we must confess it, 
and let God get rid of it for us. We can't do anything but just give it to Him and let Him take care of it. We can't wash it away. We can't wish it away. But we can confess it and God can take it away. The Bible says He cast our sins as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. Amen? Not only does He forgive, but He forgets tonight. Amen? But so many times we fail to acknowledge Him when we sin. So tonight, I challenge you, if you falter, you fail along the way, amen, don't try to justify it. Just confess it to God and let God forgive you of it. And I believe today we must daily recognize and acknowledge, acknowledge God. Daily we must acknowledge God. Not just Sunday, not just Easter, not just Palm Sunday, not just Good Friday, but every single day of our lives, we must acknowledge God. Amen? Psalm 86 and verse 3. It says, Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto you, unto thee daily. Amen? If we're going to live a good, successful Christian life, we must, amen, acknowledge Him daily. You want to know why too many people are living in defeat? Because they fail to acknowledge God daily. They think Sunday's enough. I can live the rest of the week and not have to pray, not have to read my Bible, not have to spend time with God. Amen. But we must daily, amen, cry out to the Lord and ask God to direct our path and ask God to lead us and ask God to guide us. Amen. And ask God to protect us from our enemies. Amen. But daily we must cry out to the Lord. And we must recognize Him every single day of our lives. Amen? Because we're not our own. We've been bought with a price. He purchased us with His blood. He purchased us. He has redeemed us, brought us out of darkness into the light. He's grafted us in to the vine. Amen? He's grafted us in to the family of God. Amen? And we must daily cry out to Him. Amen? Because I don't want to live a defeated life to you. And the only way we can live a successful life for God is to daily cry out to Him. We must acknowledge God in our families. First Chronicles 13 and verse 14. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom. Yeah, that's him. Obed-Edom. I practiced that, I did. And the ark of God remained with the family of him and his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obededidim and all that he had. Yeah. But what I want to acknowledge out of this scripture tonight, as the ark of God represented the presence of God. Amen. And I believe tonight that we must recognize God in our homes and our families and allow the presence of God into our homes and in our lives. Amen. When the, when the presence of God is there, how many knows our homes are blessed? Amen. Amen. We can try to fill our home with all kinds of things. Amen. And think we're blessed. But without the presence of God, how many knows tonight we are not blessed? Amen. I'm glad tonight mom and dad brought me to church. They acknowledged the presence of God when I was young, even though I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Every time that they brought me to church, amen, every time I heard the Word of God, how many knows the seed was planted and the Word of God does not return void? Amen. Every time that I heard the Word, it got down into my heart. No matter how many times I tried to erase it, tried to deny it, tried to walk away from it, how many knows it's always, it was always there? And how many knows tonight when you get in the presence of God, how many knows it makes you different? The Bible says this house of this man was blessed because... The presence of the Lord was there, or the ark of God, amen, was there. You want your home to be blessed, amen, let the presence of God dwell in your home. Acknowledge God in your family. Allow the presence of God into your home, amen. Acknowledge God to be the Lord of your home, amen. 
I believe that, amen, that we acknowledge a lot of things in our homes. That we allow a lot of things in our home and we drive out the presence of God. I want to welcome the presence of God into my home, don't you? I want to acknowledge God in my family. I want to acknowledge God in my home tonight. Next, we must recognize and acknowledge God in our marriages. Matthew 19, 6 says, Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. But therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Now we know tonight this scripture is talking about a man and woman getting married and about how, amen, when God joins us together, let no man put it asunder or let no man separate. And I believe tonight that the best way, in the, well, there's people that's not saved that stay together, but the best way for us to stay together as married couples is to acknowledge God in our marriages. Amen. Acknowledge God in our marriages. Satan wants to divide Satan wants to separate. God, Satan wants to, amen, divide marriages today. God wants to put men and women together. He wants to ordain the marriage between a man and a woman. Between a man and a woman. God ordains that, but Satan wants to divide it. Satan wants to destroy marriages. Amen. But what God had joined together, let no man put asunder. And I believe tonight the only way we're going to be able to stay together and stay united, because the Bible says we're no longer two, but we become one flesh. And the only way that we can become that one flesh is through Him. Christ is what brings us together as one. Amen. I know we all have our own opinions and ideas. She has her opinions and I have my opinions and they don't always meet eye to eye. But we're still married, right? And we still acknowledge God. We can't let our opinions separate us. We can't let the devil separate us. Amen. We must come together as one. Amen. And acknowledging God in our marriage. Amen. That God is the first, and a, uh, the leader and the head of our homes. Amen. Moving on tonight, we need to acknowledge and recognize God in our finances. Malachi 3 and 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. We need to acknowledge God in our finances tonight. Amen. 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 I'm not here to take an offering. I'm not here to get in your business. But I'm here to tell you, if you acknowledge God in your finances, He'll bless you. How many raise your hands tonight say, I'm blessed because I tithe? I can tell you time and time again how God has taken what we thought wasn't enough and made it more than enough. Amen. If you try to figure it out and try to rationalize it, sometimes it will drive you crazy. Amen. But if we'll learn to acknowledge God and put Him first. Put Him first. Don't write out all your bills and then expect to pay your tithes. Because how many knows a lot of times there ain't enough left? But if you learn to pay your tithes first, if you learn to acknowledge God first, He'll take what little you got left and He'll make it more than enough. Too many people got it twisted around. They acknowledge God after they pay all their bills, after they pay everything else, and then they say, I don't have enough to pay my tithes. Amen. But we need to acknowledge God first in our finances. Amen. Write out your tithes first. And then God said He would open up the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing that we won't even have room enough to receive it. Amen. I'm thankful for God's blessings tonight. I'm, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about being blessed, coming in and going out. Amen. But I believe God wants to bless you in your finances. Amen. I'm not saying your bank, bank account's going to go from $40 to $4,000 because you tithe. Because it probably won't happen. Amen. I believe God can do it. But more times than none, it don't really happen. 
But you know what? If you got $40 in the bank, how many knows you can still be blessed? Because God has put His blessing upon your finances. Amen. That $40 is just what you need. Amen. And I believe tonight my Bible says God shall supply all of our needs according to His riches and His glory. Not my financial riches, but His riches and His glory. Amen. He'll open up the windows of heaven and He'll pour out a blessing on us that there may not even be room enough to receive it. We know the stories of, you know, the five loaves and two fishes. It's, well, how the, what, twelve baskets of fragments were taken up. They didn't have near enough. Five thousand people were fed with five loaves and two fishes. And they took up more than what they even started with. How many knows tonight if you acknowledge God in your finances, He'll help you go home with more than what you started with. Amen. All right, I'll move on. Get off that. That's not a fun one. Lastly, tonight, we need to recognize God in every decision that we make. Every decision that we make. Proverbs 3 and 6 told us in all of our ways, we need to acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. Every decision that you have to make, Acknowledge God. Everything that you're going through tonight, acknowledge God. Everything that you have to do tomorrow, acknowledge God. Everything that you have to do the rest of this week, you acknowledge God and you let God direct your path. Amen. When you're faced with things you thought that there's no way I'm going to get through this. There's no way I'm going to be able to handle this. There's no way I'm going to make it through this. You acknowledge God. You let God direct your path and let God see you through what you have to go through. Amen. Because my God doesn't try to kill His children, but He tries to lead us. He tries to direct us. And He wants us to be victorious today. Amen. Amen. You can clap for him. But too many times we try to make our own decisions in our own, amen, in our own ways, and then we try to acknowledge God when we've already got ourselves in a mess. But why not start off the week tonight? By acknowledging God. I don't know what you have to do tomorrow. I don't know what you have to do Tuesday. I don't know what you have to do on Wednesday. Amen. But I know tonight we must acknowledge God and allow Him to direct your path. And can I tell you tonight, you may not have the best week you've ever had, but you can know that every step that you took, God was with you, and God did not fail you, and God did not forsake you. Amen? Yeah, sometimes serving God's hard. And sometimes it's difficult. But we can look. Amen? Well, I like that. What that footprints in the sand? When there's two sets of footprints and the person looked back and said, Lord, there was only one. Why was there only one? That was the time that the Lord carried them. Amen. How many know sometimes if He has to carry you, how many knows He'll carry you? If you'll acknowledge Him, if you'll recognize Him, amen, when the path gets hard, too hard to walk, how many knows He'll hold you up and He'll help lead you through? And if He has to carry you, He'll carry you through the door, amen? amen. Hallelujah. I've told you stories and things, how I've been faced with difficult times in my life, and there's been times I thought I couldn't go through what I had to go through. But can I stand, tell you tonight, I'm still standing and I made it through. Amen. God will see you through if you learn to acknowledge Him in all your ways. He will direct your path. Amen. When the enemy says, I got you in a corner, you're not getting out. How many knows Jesus? We said it before. Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against our enemy. He'll get you out of the corner. Amen. If you learn to acknowledge Him. There's so many times when we get in the corner, that's when we begin to blame God. Why did you let me come here? Why did you let me get here? And most of the time, God's not the one that put us there because we failed to acknowledge Him. Amen. I hope tonight the Word of God's challenged our hearts. If the musicians, singers would come.
Recognize and acknowledge God in everything. Allow Him to direct your path. Let's stand to our feet tonight. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with tonight. But I know tonight if we'll acknowledge God, God will see you through. God is not a man that He would lie. He said if we would acknowledge Him, He shall direct our path. As we bow our heads and close our eyes tonight, maybe you're here tonight and you're on a path leading towards sin. Maybe you're separated from God because of sin tonight. Maybe you've not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've allowed other things to sit on the throne of your heart tonight. If you're here tonight away from God, the altars are open tonight for you. If you'll get out of your seat and acknowledge God, Jesus will forgive you of your sins. He'll come into your life and He'll begin to direct your path. Or maybe you're here tonight and you're faced with great challenges, great difficulties, things in your life seem to be going out of control. If you're here tonight, you need to acknowledge God tonight. Get out of your seat. Come to this altar and say, God, I acknowledge you. Direct my path. Does that mean I'm a sinner? No. You're saying, God, I acknowledge you and I need your direction. Tonight, if you need God to do something in your life, if you're about to make a decision, you're about to do something that's bigger than you are, come, acknowledge God and allow Him to direct your path. Amen. If you don't want to come around the front, the altars are open. Let's all find us a place of prayer. And let's acknowledge God right where we're at tonight. Say, God, you know what tomorrow holds for me. Help me to make it through and live in victory tonight. Hallelujah.
become satisfied and content and comfortable. God have a, has an overwhelming supply. He wants us to draw closer and closer to Him each and every day. But when we draw back and we fail to acknowledge Him, we won't be all that God wants us to be. Amen. It's your step first, and then He'll meet you. But you got to make the first step tonight. Amen. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate the presence of the Lord. Remember bowling tomorrow night, 6.30 Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. How many will pray for Easter Sunday and for Good Friday services? People will come out. They usually don't come out on Easter. So pray that souls will be saved. That's what it's all about. Amen. Grab a palm branch. Take it home with you. Here you go. Take home too. <laughs> Amen. Let's bow our heads and be dismissed. Brother Roy, will you dismiss us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for who you are. And Lord, we just ask that you move upon each and every one. And God, as we leave, that God, we keep you with us. And God, that you will guide.